Friday, July 22nd. How about that? I have a feeling it's halfway to Christmas. Eesh, eesh. Well, I have my little buddy up here, so we'll see how long that lasts. And um, John may have to come get her. She's indoor, outdoor now, so a lot of that energy is going outdoors. But the other thing, you know how she has a white tummy? Well, it's brown now because she's taken to climbing trees. I'm very um, happy today to be presenting to you some of your work. Um, when I decided to have this guild show and tell, I it never occurred to me how many of you would be so generous in sending in your work. And for some of you, it was your very first time. So that's super cool. But yesterday, I went to Diana McClens for a little mini group, and I'm so excited with what I got from there. I have admired this in her um, guest bathroom in her studio. This was her art in there. Look at this. Okay, well, if that's not enough, look at this. A little gel gel? Mm-hmm, you should be. And so why I was so excited about, I mean, I just love this. It may end up being artwork in my house too. But right now uh, we're preparing for taping at the end of August and my demo involves buttons. So I'm very, I, I just, I couldn't even believe it. I could, I go, she, I want those and I'll return them to you. And she said, no, I could have them. So um, there are a lot of really cool buttons out there. And basically in my demo, we're gonna stick, stick to the classics, but you know, who knows, right? You guys are so dang creative. That's what you're, I'm learning from you over and over. So we're gonna go through show and tell. I think I've hit them all. I think we've got it. And we will do this again in the future because I just think it's been so darn cool. And then Shelly, the producer, who you've met here before, it, it did a um, little bit on what Mary McCauley sent us as a thank you. And it, I told you to watch the show last Wednesday and it involves her whole pop-up thing. You, you're, I couldn't believe it. I, in the end, we're all gonna be fighting over this thing. I got news for you. So I'm trying to see comments here, because I know you're here. There we go. Yay. You know, Becky Guile Anderson, my dad was born in Milwaukee, and it went to Shoreline High or Shorewood High. So Milwaukee holds a very special place in my heart. Okay, let's do show and tell, all right? So uh, make sure I'm at the bottom, yeah. So we're going to hit it off with K. Oh, no. Okay, wait. I'm not going, oh, this doesn't line up with my notes. Okay. Kay sent me this picture, and oh, my gosh, my heart went completely pitter-patter. Okay, I can't remember, Kay, if you said that this was grandma's or your mom's or whatever, but um, look what she's done with her linen. I think she said it was her mom, and she's lined it. And then is using it as a window cover. Using it as a window covering. I believe she said in her kitchen. She said she hadn't thought of quilting it. <clears throat> she did this a while ago. I would not quilt this. No way. If it was being used for this purpose. Because the way the sun comes through those cut holes. Just absolutely beautiful. And then um, I appreciate that it's lined, okay? I'm sure it will sustain some damage, but it's better than just sitting in a, you know, drawer somewhere. And then I remembered up at the cabin um, in the guest bedroom, one of the curtains is something like that, only it's got embroidery. And boy, when Cindy and Robin were there, man, they wanted to just cut it up. And they were concerned that the light was on it and would be damaging. But the truth of it is it has level ores behind it, so it rarely sees the light of daylight. So I just I, I just think that is so elegant and so beautiful. And honestly, if you went to Cindy Needham's house, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw something like this. Okay, so Megan sent this quilt, and it is Sitka, Alaska. It's from a 1918 image, <clears throat> and... It in, um, oh, Megan Pasternak. I wonder if you're related to Miss Pasternak, which would have been my kid's TK teacher, who we love Miss Pasternak. Anyways, it got viewer's choice for small quilts at her local guild. I've been to Sitka, and I just, 
first of all, when I opened up this picture, I thought it was a photograph. <laughs> And then, you know, when I just first glance, and then I'm like, wait, oh my gosh. I mean, it's just beautiful. And the fact it's in black and white and all that, yeah, I'll take it, right? Okay, then we have um, Deanne Kinzel. And here is her CAFE color quilt. I want to point out a couple things, or CAFE mystery quilt. First of all, uh, you pulled out a move there that I used to do with my star quilts, Deanne, and, uh, or is it Deanna? I think Deanne or Deanna. There's an E at the end, so I'm going to go with Deanne. Uh, and that is in the borders, I would often put blocks. So I know right now that those borders are six inch wide. And then rather than just have the logs all the way around, you insert some renegade blocks. And so that was something I did all the time with my star quilts. And I, it kicked back that memory when I opened your quilt. It's just beautiful. Thank you for sending it. Thank you everybody for sending these things, okay? It takes a village <laughs> to raise us quilters. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. Joanna ordered a bundle of fabric and she got it and she wasn't Oh, gosh, I hope I'm getting the story right. She wasn't um, happy with the bundle. She made a convergence quilt and, you know, Ricky's convergence quilt. And we've had, we have a show on that. And when it was done, she didn't like it. So she took a cue from Katie Fowler and cut it up. And then she put it back together. And this is such a winner. And again, if you haven't watched Katie Fowler's show, you're missing the boat. And don't don't worry, you'll live through it. But I believe the reason she bought this fabric is because of this these U's and the black and the white and um and all of that. So, you know, when you have something, be willing to cut it up. Thank you, Katie Fowler. And honestly, I think this is quite spectacular. I think all of you would agree with that. All right, and then we have Terry. Oh, this, <laughs> this is called State of Mind. And she was gifted a bunch of scraps and her guild did a scrap challenge. So let's take a look at it for the first glance. She believed she could, so she did. Okay, let's read it again and look a little harder. She believed she couldn't, so she didn't. Yep. Terry is from Alberta, Canada. I love this because basically that's it in a nutshell. Have faith. You can do it. She believed she could, so she did. I love that. Thank you so much, Terry. And thank you for pointing out the subtlety of it because honestly, I've there's a darn good chance I would have missed I would have missed it. Although it's funny, I'll put things up, I'll make, you know, my notes and all that kind of stuff. And then when I show it to you guys, I'm like going, oh my gosh, I didn't see that before. Okay, so then, oh, here's another. This is, I'm telling you, where, Kathy, Kathy Estes. All right. <clears throat> so I'm sure most of you know that Cherrywood Fabrics, that we all love, they're hand dyed, they're up Minnesota, Wisconsin, and they have challenges every year. And her family bought her the kit it was a 2019 Bob Ross challenge. And she like really had zero intention of participating in the whole thing. But um, because they gave her the kit, she had to. And guess what? She was a winner. If you ever were any of the cherry wood challenges are, it they are spectacular. And these were little things. Um, shoot, I don't know. Off the top of my head, they're what would this be? Maybe 20 by 20 or something. If somebody knows the exact size, they can uh, enter it here. But they're small pieces. And the first one that set me on my pins was the Lion King. I couldn't believe. I don't even know how they were judged. They were just masterful. So if you're not familiar with Cherrywood Fabrics, it's time for you to get out from under that rock and go check out their website. Their, their stuff is just absolutely beautiful. 
And Kathy, congratulations. Okay. Oh, this is sweet. Laverne fancies herself as a traditional quilt maker and decided to step out of the box and do a faces quilt. And I will tell you right now, that's the box to jump into if you're a traditionalist and want to try something new because it's just so much fun. So she did a portrait of her, her husband and her. I, I recognize you on the street, both of you. I love this. And look at the rickrack for his hair. You know, I was with some younger people the other day. They didn't know what rickrack was. And so I think somebody likes soccer. And my guess would be that you're in California because of the bear. And, and, <laughs> and then look at her hair. Is that cats in her hair? Is that a cat? I think it might be. And their patchwork cheeks. So much fun. You guys, this is, this is coloring book fun. If you haven't done a self-portrait, uh, we did this for free here. Go look it up and do it. It is just ridiculously fun. Okay. Then Gloria wrote me a golly, not that long ago. And she has, um, family hankies, and she's going to make 10 little girls. Well, check number one off the list. Um, she was asking about thread color and this and that, and I think you should be very happy, Gloria, and look at the initials that have been quilted in there. Or, or uh, straight line embroidery. I think straight line embroidery. So, Gloria, one down, nine to go. And we'll all break out into 99 bottles of beer on the wall for you. <laughs> and let me tell you, when you're done with those, you'll be, you will be more than ready to go to the next level by a long shot. Okay, so then this is Patricia's. And this is her cave. And she actually gifted it to her friend's grandson in Florida. You know, I think as we get older, I mean, I have to hang on to some of my, and I'm not assuming you're any age, Patricia. Um, there are quilts that I have to hang on to because that's how I earn my living. But there are other quilts that are just taking up space. And so I always try and hang on to a couple good ones, but ones in the end I know my kids really will not be interested in. And if they're not earning a living for me, um, when some sort of, disaster comes up, I see how I can raise money using that quilt, like Pokey did for the Ukraine Food Bank. Okay, pass it on. Pass it on. And then this is Patricia's too. Uh, this is her magic vine. And I think, I can't remember where you said we met up, but we met up and I said, oh, it needs more quilting. Honestly, I don't even remember, which is kind of rude, but it's pretty darn beautiful. And if this were my quilt, it would reside on my bed in the summer, just in spring. It's beautiful. And then um, foundation, what is this one, Patricia? Oh, this is um, the foundation paper piecing quilt that you did in our class. So I always like to look at the sets. I super love how you broke apart those New York beauties with the kaleidoscope, and I don't think that's how I did it. Um, but boy, this looks just fabulous. I, I really am humbled by how good you people are. Okay, turn the page, seriously, and, and how diverse we all are. Okay, so Barb, Barb sent us a picture of this quilt back, a while back, and we love it. We love, love, love it, but then look what she did. Barb is an RVer, and so she did this. Yep. A barn quilt. And now other people where she hangs want to do it too. So I'm not sure if she painted, I'm sure she painted it or whatever, but wow, that is flipping spectacular. And that's kind of like a secret way. If you're in a place where you don't know anybody, let them know you're a quilter. I think there are a lot of quilters who are in the big rig game. Okay, then this is Kathy's. Oh, Okay, she said it was QOA. I think she means QOV, Quilts of Valor. If I am wrong, somebody please um, let me know. But first of all, this is flipping stunning. Um, and she pointed out how she used the ombre for the background. And look at the dimension that it 
gave. And I'm going to tell you right now, Miss Kathy Estes, my mom, this would have been her pick. She loved eagles, absolutely loved eagles. So um, tell me, people, is there a QOA or should it be Quilts of Valor? Okay, we'll see if somebody puts that in. I think it's Quilts of Valor. Yes, beautiful. Oh, my gosh. And if you think about it, guys, this wasn't that hard to do. I mean, really, when you, that's a simple nine-patch block with a rail fence in between. If that, if that were a pattern, it would sell like hotcakes. Okay. Then we go to Jean um, Etheridge. Okay, I can't remember what it was. Oh, okay. So she was inspired by Roderick Kirchhoff's book, Unconventional, Unconventional and Unexpected Quilts. These are, these are the kind of quilts that are up my alley. And this is um, her rendition of it. And she used Aboriginal designs. Um, and the reason she did it is because she's from Huntsville, Alabama, and she was, and I believe that's where the original quilt was from, and she was trying to recreate it. You know, in my book, um, those, those fabrics are really hard to work with. And man, let's take a look at the quilt again. You nailed it. That is fabulous. I love unconventional and unexpected quilts. I think they might be my very favorite now. Okay. So, oh, so Carol made a ducky quilt. Oh, shoot. Where'd you go? And I just wanted to show you a close-up of it. It's for baby. And she did this with embroidery on her machine. And so what I would like to commission you is if you have a machine that has the capability of embroidery, it might be time to jump into that swimming pool. I know I was really afraid of it. And once I got over it, being afraid of it, uh, I found it to be very rewarding and you could do some really cool things. And some kid is going to be very lucky to get that ducky quilt. Okay, this is Alice and she sent me a bunch of images, so I pulled a couple. Here's her hearts quilt. Would this not be an adorable pattern for um, a baby? And you know what I'm wondering? Um, Alice, if this didn't come from one of the Quilts, Quilts, Quilts series with Diana and Laura. And then here is a wonky log cabin. I think both of these are going to be snuggled under quite wonderfully. I am going from to blue being my favorite color. Okay, this is um, Marie's. And, oh, we recognize this quilt. I want to show you the label, but the other thing I want to point out is that there are, she did apply crystals on it. And I used to be uh, crystal resistant. And then when I started putting them on some quilts, I've kind of becoming, I love them. And they um, are easy to put on. And I, I don't want to over crystal my quilt, but I want to walk by and have the light catch it. And so I have learned to love crystals. And I'm thinking maybe, D or I should do a demo on how easy it is to do those crystals. Oh, but then also look at the back. A flower by any other color. Love it. There's another reason to learn machine embroidery right there. Okay. Oh, okay. I think we just looked at that one. Yes. Okay. So now this is Joanne's. And um, I think this is so much fun. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not quite sure how she put it together, but the quilting in the background is very, very interesting. And all of a sudden, there I see it. There it is, the bird. I love birds. And actually, she said the nest is three-dimensional. So how fun is that? I like it that at the very beginning, I didn't, let's take a look at the beginning. I didn't see the bird. I, I just like, whoa, the, the blast of color, the interesting background, the strong lines of the tree, and then there it is, the sweet little birdie in the nest. Okay, oh, this is, this is interesting. Becky, this is Becky's, and uh, it's a cathedral window quilt. 
and cathedral windows have been around for a long, long time. Now, if I were a quilt historian, by this look right here, I would say this was made maybe 20 years ago, okay? So then she sent another picture, and I'm like going, oh no, it was done recently. Look at that steampunk on the lower left-hand corner and in the upper right-hand corner, kind of whimsical stuff. That is fabric that is now. And that is often how quilt historians do this, is they go to the fabric, they go to the pattern. Okay, this is an old-fashioned pattern, but then they go to the fabric to figure out when the heck it was made. Um, there, there's books on that, and that's actually something that Julie Silber is a maven with. Okay. Oh, and then Christy. Christy, you've waited. <laughs> you've waited. Oh, my goodness. Here, wait a minute. Um, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let me go back first. She finished Color My World. Look at that. Um, it was actually almost done with all of Ricky's hand eyes. So it is beautiful. I will make sure he sees this because I can guarantee you he's not watching this right now. It's beautiful, beautiful. All right, but then, oh, that's not enough, okay? I love, oh my gosh, Christy. Oh, oh but wait, people, that's not enough. <laughs> well, what is it? Idle hands are the devil's workshop. You don't have to worry about that because you are cranking these puppies out. Congratulations and thank you for sharing them. Um, okay, so let's go. Oh, okay, just so before we go to Shelly, um, love these show and tales. Door County was wonderful, just lo not long enough. Yeah, uh, saw the house where my mom was born. Yeah, love Door County. Okay, let's go to our fabulous producer, Shelly Heesacker, and she will show you what Mary McCauley made for us. <laughs> your, your mind's going to be blown. Hi, Alex, and hi, everyone at home. I'm Shelly. I'm the producer of the show, and it is an extraordinary sunny day in Oregon, so I had to share some of that. But I have something really special to share with you. It's a thank you that we got from one of our guests. We taped with Mary McCauley in March of 2022. She does dimensional quilts that are really exceptional. She was inspired by pop-up books as a child. And so she thought, how could I do that in fabric? And so anyway, I'm about to show you something incredible that you'll wanna see, but I wanna tell you just a little behind the scenes magic. One of the best gifts of my job is that I really get to work with each artist from start to finish. That means that I get to talk to them for hours uh, when I'm first meeting them and I ask them a lot of questions to get to know about their art, about why they do the art that they do. And in that process, I learn all sorts of gems. Like I learned with Mary that she has a pretty wicked sense of humor and she has come up with all these funny little ways to insult another quilter in a kind, funny way that other quilters would enjoy that's important to the story so that's why i'm telling you that if you watch the show you will get to see how that gets woven into her show and we had a lot of fun with that so anyway at the end of the taping mary says hey shelly i'd like to send you and your team a thank you do you could you send me your address and i said no problem so i sent her my address and sure enough in the mail came this card a beautiful little card and uh and a lot of artists are very kind and and thank us for the process, but she says, to the whole TQS crew, thank you. You all made my experience easy, fun, and memorable. We love to hear that. I wanted to send a special thank you card instead of quilting insults with compliments for all. Best wishes, Mary McCauley. Now, that is pretty special, so that's a tease. Then I reach in a box, because she sent a box with this is the card now it's a little bigger than most cards you might get in the grocery store i'd say but right here on the front it says the quilt show bless their hearts because we did that a lot in the show that was fun but anyway wait till you see this it is 
the quilt show set. Unbelievable. Mary made the quilt show set. And I'm going to put it down here and just show you more of this. But look at this. Oh, a little, a little bug. I'm outside. A little Oregon bug. I'm going to put it all together because she, she puts it things with Velcro so it will fold down. But then we just put it back up. There's the jib camera. Pop up jib camera. Look, there's even cables here for the jib camera. Unbelievable, Mary. But you, so you might recognize the flooring <laughs> because that is our flooring. This is where uh, Alex sits and Ricky sits. Look at the little pillows. And this is where the guest sits. You can recognize Ricky's picture of his quilt that's always on our walls. But this is what she says. This is what she talks about compliments. If you're lucky enough to be on the quilt show, you are lucky enough. Isn't that sweet? And look at these plants over here. You can even see the, the dirt in the container. It's not real dirt, but she made it look like that with her, look at this, look at the stitching on the leaves. The leaves, <laughs> look at that. I mean, that is amazing. And and here are some lights that, you know, cause there's always light. She says, lighting, see every detail without the squint or sweat. And this wall, this is our wall where we hang quilts. It even has the molding on it, every detail. And this is what it says, a set like a comfy home that you want to live in. Over here, it says, sound to make whispers speak volumes and roars fit in. And then look at this little demo table. We got even a, a grid, a cutting mat on the top with the grid. And it's, and, and there's a monitor. This is the monitor on the side of the jib. It says cameras that see everything while you don't seem to see them. And then she says a compliment to me, a compliment to Lilo, a compliment to Alex, a compliment to Ricky. It's just so amazing. Like I'll read Ricky's compliment. It says, he's a judge so skilled at constructive feedback, he can tell you to go to hell and you look forward to the trip. And for Alex, she said, she's such a great teacher. She gets students to teach her and everybody learns. So this is a pretty extraordinary gift. And I just thought you had to see it because um, this was a thank you to our whole team, but I was the one who got to open it and see that pop-up glory for the first time. And I just, I called up Alex. I said, we got to share this. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that at home. I think one of the best things besides talking to the artists that we feature on our show is just knowing how amazingly creative the quilting community is. All of you guys are and gals are doing an amazing job out there and just keep creating. And thank you for watching our show. I really appreciate it. These things, we don't need thank yous to do what we do on the show, but this was a special one to share. I hope you all have a good day. amazing and yes sherry's all fabric amazing so honestly mary thank you so much i couldn't believe it uh when shelly showed it to me i said you got to make a movie you got to make a movie and then we decided to wait until of course your show show is airing and you know one of the things that um we are lucky enough if you're lucky enough to be on tqs you're lucky enough if you're lucky enough to be a part of the TQS family, you are lucky enough. If I am lucky enough to be here with you, I am lucky enough. So with that, I would like to wish you a lovely weekend. Dee is at her retreat tomorrow, so there will not be Dee. Uh, Monday, we have one last thing with Katie. So I know you've all enjoyed it immensely. And in the meantime, oh, I skipped one slide. I hope I can find it. I hope I can find it. <clears throat> ah, I don't know if I can find it. Oh, here. This is a message from Melanie that I got. Alex, I went to Salvation Army Thrift Show this thrift store this morning and bought 104 silk ties. They're regularly two each. So she got them half off because it was senior whatever, my 
overlays her there. And um, um, there, and she felt like she, she hit the jackpot. Okay, Kelly, if I have missed people, and that is absolutely 100% possible, because you guys know me, send it to me and I'll show it on Monday. Because I, I feel like some did slip, slip in the cracks, and so there wasn't anything like, oh, she doesn't like me. That means I screwed up. So Kelly, please send it to me, okay? And we, I know you're a faithful watcher here and all that, and I, I will get it up. So that's my commission to you. If I skipped you for some reason, it's my bad. Uh, resend it, and we'll do a little recap on Monday, okay, along with Katie Lady. So have a great weekend. Go on scavenger hunt. Go find those ties. you got plenty of time because we're going to do two other projects before. And um, soon those bundles behind us will be for sale for our next one. Oh, thank you for putting it up. A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at Gmail. And accept my apologies if for some reason you got bumped. We're going to get you in, I promise. Have a great, great weekend. Bye-bye.